Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Code Tover Day 9. 9? Yes, 9. In today's video, I am going to show you how to deploy your Mule applications to Cloud Hub 2 using the Mule Maven plugin. So we're here at any point code builder. Let's click on develop and integration to just create an empty mule application. And there we have our very, very basic mule application just to test it out. All right, after that, let's go to the pom. First thing we're gonna do is to change this group ID for your actually organization ID. So for that, you can either go to any point platform and just copy the organization ID that you get here. Or you can go to Access Management, Business Groups, click on your business group, and here you will be able to retrieve the group, business group ID. So paste that group ID right there. I'm gonna change the version to be 100 instead of just snapshot. And another very important thing is to make sure to use this version of the Mule Maven plugin, because when we create our application here, the Mule Maven plugin version that we're getting is 3.3.5. So just make sure that you have 381 or higher, I guess. We're gonna use this distribution management in a moment. In the meantime, you can just base on this whole plugin thing and you're gonna change the configuration from here. So you can copy that and paste it in the pump. So right here we have our Mule Maven plugin inside plugins, inside build, and there just remove this configuration and paste the new thing. Now, this is what I am gonna change, but just make sure that this matches with what you're trying to do. In this case, environment is gonna be sandbox. The target is the name of the region where you're going to send this application. In my case, it's gonna be Cloud Hub US East 2. The mule version is gonna be 440. I'm gonna skip the username and password for now, but I'll let you know how to set that up later. And your application name, kind of, I think has to match this artifact ID or this name. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it there, right here. Replicas one, vcores one. And then here on deployment settings, I kind of don't want to set this all up right now. So I'm gonna remove that, but I am gonna use generate default public URL set to true. So this will generate this all for me coming from the application name. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you will be able to see here that this is using any point exchange version two, but we want to use version three. So change that to four a three right there and also right here. Now you will want to copy this ID because we're gonna use it. You can also change it to whatever else you want, but this is gonna have to match in two other places. So just make sure that you use the same ID. Now, if we go back to the docs and we scroll up, we saw this distribution management thing, so let's copy it. And we're gonna paste it right at the end, just after dependencies, but inside project, right here. So remember what I told you about the ID, so you can just go up and copy that any point exchange v3 or whatever name you decided to put, and then go back to distribution management and make sure that ID matches what is up there. Corporate repository is fine. And then in the URL, first, make sure that this is v3, same as before. And second, you will need to update here your organization ID, same as what you had before. So you can either create a property that you can just uh, reference from there, or you can just copy and paste, whatever is better for you. In this case, because I'm just trying to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So that's all for the POM XML, but we are not done with the configuration yet. Inside this repo, I am just gonna create this file and folder just to give you more visibility, but you can also go to the M2 folder for your Maven configurations. So I'm gonna create a new folder.maven, and inside there, I'm gonna create a new file called settings.xml. Yes, the same settings that you have in your .m2 folder. Now here in the docs, it talks about encrypting your properties and whatnot, but I'm not gonna do that. And also I don't want to use username and password just because I, I want to use a connected app. So pretty much what this is asking you to do is inside the settings file, create a server with the ID, username and password, but I don't want to use my any point username and password, which is just what it's asking for you here. So if I go back to settings.xml, I'm just gonna paste the configuration that I already had. 
And this ID, remember, has to match the same other two IDs that we had here in distribution management and in the repository. So in my case, it's Anypoint Exchange v3, and that's what I have here. Now, I want to use the client ID and client secret from my connected app. I will show you how to create it in a moment. But just put here in username, you have to just literally put what is here, which is client. And in the password, you can just put here your client ID, and then you have to put these three characters and then put your client secret. It sounds more complicated, yeah, so you can just use your username and password from any point platform if that's what you prefer. But I just want to use the connected app. Also, if you're using multi-factor authentication in any point platform, you will have to use the connected app. So now in any point platform, if you go to access management and then select connected apps, you have to create a new app here. I'm just going to call it test app acts on its own behalf. And let's add some scopes. So for design center, I need design center developer for exchange. You can select exchange administrator and that would be good enough. Then from general, go right to the end and select view environment and view organization from open ID, select profile and from runtime manager, select cloud hub organization admin create, delete, download applications, read applications, and read servers. That makes it 11 scopes. Select next and select your business group. Next. Your environment. In my case, I'm going to select sandbox. Next. And just review that you have the necessary scopes. And finally, click on add scopes. Here you can check them out again. I have 11 and then just click on save. Here is your ID and secret. I'm going to use those in a moment, but not yet. Also notice that you could kind of add your credentials here, but because I'm using this from the repository, I'm not going to do that because it could be a security concern. But if you're doing this from your .m2 folder in your local machine, then you can totally go ahead and put your credentials right there. Now, if we go back to the docs, it kind of tells you like if you are setting up the server from the Maven thing, then in your Cloud Hub 2 deployment configuration, you can just kind of use the server instead of having to actually use your username and password again here. And that is exactly what I am going to do. So remember the server ID is any point exchange v3. So now if I scroll up to where I have my Cloud Hub 2 deployment, instead of using here my AnyPoint platform username and password, I am now going to select server. And this is the name of the ID that I have been using before. So now the credentials that happen from the settings are going to be the credentials that are going to be used right here. You may be wondering, why are we setting all of this up if we didn't set up all of this in, in Cloud Hub 1? Well, that's mainly because we need to publish these in Exchange first. And after publishing in Exchange, then we can actually do the deployment to Cloud Hub 2. So now this is a command that we are going to run to first publish this application to Exchange, which is just Maven deploy. And then we're letting it know that the settings file that I wanted to use is in Maven settings. And then here we have to set up the client ID and client secret. So if we go back to our connected app, you can simply click here on copy ID and paste it on client ID, copy secret and paste it on client secret. And now let's go ahead and run this in my terminal. Once we get the build success, we can go back to exchange, refresh this and it should appear here now. Now to deploy this to Cloud Hub instead of Exchange, we just need to add one line, which is mule deploy. And let's run this. Once we have the build success, we can go and check out in Runtime Manager and our mule application is running. That was a long one. All right, that's all for this video then. That is how you deploy stuff to Cloud Hub 2. Um, you always have to be updated this POM. So every time that you want to send a new deployment, you will have to update this version right here and then first send it to Exchange and then send it to Cloud Hub. Or, you know, you can just try sending it to Cloud Hub without sending it to Exchange, but we're trying to do the right thing here. That's all for day nine. I will see you tomorrow in day 10 of Code Over 23. Bye.